welcome. And thank you for joining us for the Mark Montclair Sunday morning worship experience. We hope you will be blessed by what you experience today. Whether you have joined us in the sanctuary or are worshiping with us online, feel free to worship and sing along as we are together in spirit with God and with one another. Hi, welcome to the Mark Montclair. Welcome to the Mark. Welcome to the mic. We're glad you're here. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm Pastor Leslie Houseworth Fields of the Mark Montclair, and I am so excited to be in worship with you today. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 54, verse 4, and it says, Surely God is my help. The Lord is the one who sustains me. And as we prepare to enter into this worship service, let us remember that no matter what we're going through, God is our help. The hymn writer said, oh God, our help in ages past. God is our help. God is watching over us. God is guiding us. And so let us worship God with confidence, knowing that no matter what we face, we are not on our own. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we thank you for another opportunity to come together and to worship you. God, you know what we bring with us to this worship experience, but help us to have confidence in knowing that you are our help. And so now we come to honor and praise you and lift up your holy name. Uh, may, we be, may you be honored in the songs we sing and the prayers we pray. And as we praise, we give you thanks for hearing this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us worship God together. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased by God. Born of his spirit, washed in his love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending bring from above Echoes of mercy, whispers of love This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long This is my story, this is my song my Savior all the day long. Perfect some all is at rest I and my Savior am happy and blessed watching and waiting looking above filled with his goodness lost in his love this is my story this is my song praising my shade all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. My song, praising my Savior all the day long. 
here's what's going on at the Mark. St. Mark's United Methodist Church will host a virtual program geared toward teenagers aged 13 or older. Connecting Through Comics is a four-week program scheduled on May 7th, 14th, 21st, and 28th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Participants must have access to a computer, laptop, or iPad, and the internet. Registration is limited to 20 students. For more information, please call or email the church office. The Mark Cares, Inc. is currently seeking non-St. Mark's members to join its board of directors. Enjoy working within a diverse community that will offer you an invaluable experience working strategically and creatively to establish equitable and inclusive opportunities for those in marginalized communities. Please submit names of nominees and their contact information by June 1st to themarkcares at gmail.com. Stay connected. Want to find out about what's happening at St. Mark's? Ways to become involved? Or do you have a need or a concern? We want to stay in community with you. Fill out a connection card online so we have your current contact information and can reach out to you. Happy birthday to all those celebrating a birthday this month. We love you and we pray for your continued safety, health, and happiness. In this time of uncertainty, please remember the sick and shut in in your prayers and with a call or card. That's what's going on at the Mark. Close. 
so I wouldn't let go. His mercy kept me, so I wouldn't let go. But here's my testimony, so I'm here today because God kept me. Yes, Lord. just celebrated Mother's Day and in this season we continue to honor the mothers and all of those who mother in our lives. And so I invite you to tune into this sermon from Minister Elijah Brown. I believe that it will be a blessing to you as we hear what thus says the Lord. If you could just go with me to Psalms 121 as we get ready to go into the word. I'll be reading from the Passion Translation and it says, I look up to the hill, to the mountain in the hills, longing for God's help. But then I realize that our true help and protection is only from the Lord, our creator who made the heavens and the earth. He will guard and guide me, never letting me stumble or fall. God is my keeper. He will never forget nor ignore me. He will never slumber nor sleep. He is the guardian God for his people, Israel, Yahweh himself will watch over you. He's always at your side to shelter your, you safely in his presence. He's protecting you from all danger, both day and night. He will keep you from every evil or calamity as he continuously watches over you. You will be guarded by God himself. You will be safe when you leave your home and safely return. He will protect you now and he'll protect you forevermore. Amen. Many of us are familiar with the first verse from another translation that says, I will lift up mine eyes from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. And people of God, the word help is very familiar, it's a very familiar word in our society. When the word is used, an individual can be requesting assistance or it can even be a signal for relief. If someone is distressed, if someone shouts help, they just might need you to help them lift a heavy load. If someone shouts help, they might just need you to help them jump their car. If someone shouts help, they just might need you to call them an ambulance. The word help can mean many different things in different situations. And even as we get ready to speak on such a topic like help, I cannot neglect the impact of a mother's help on this Mother's Day. Some of us have stories about how our mothers have impacted us in our lives. Some of us can remember going to the playground and getting a stinging bruise on our elbow or knee and running back to our mother with tears running down our face while she cleaned the bruise and she looked at us and wiped the tears from our eyes. In fact, some of you know all too well about motherhood through your own experiences, whether that means running back and forth between volleyball and soccer games or being the mediator between two bickering siblings, or that could even mean balancing a successful career while also doing all of the above. And I know as I reflect on my own experiences with my mother, I wondered how she was able to do it all. And the only answer that I can reach is that she had the Lord's help. 
Friends, even with this reflection, I want to take time to just talk with you about what it means when we call on God for help. And when we think about talking to God with help, when we go to God and petition for God and ask for help, society may make it seem as though we are weak with no hope. But friends, I want to let you know that when you take time to seek God in your time of need, understand that you have hope when making your request. There's a simple definition from Google that gives us the meaning of hope, and it defined it as the feeling of expectation, meaning that when we ask for help, we already have it made up in our mind that God is getting ready to work out a situation. We understand, or we have to understand that hope tells us that God is getting ready to change some things around for our good. Asking for help is not because you don't have any hope, but it's because there is hope in Jesus. Because the Bible tells us that we serve a God of hope. With hope, there is an expectation. Not entitlement, but an expectation. And I'm reminded of a story when King Hezekiah received a threatening letter from the Assyrian army. Hezekiah went into the temple and sought the Lord. And when he, when he saw that his kingdom was in danger, and I guarantee you that after he did that, he had an expectation that God was going to work that situation out. In other words, Hezekiah had hope. And I want to remind you all of a song that was written by some famous gospel artists that said, I'm looking for a miracle. I expect the impossible. And further into the song, it says, I expect a miracle every day. God will make a way out of no way. I expect a miracle every day. God will make a way out of no way. In my help, I have hope. And in my hope, there is an expectation. And with hope, we have to understand expectation is knowing that God will meet us in our time of need. In our need for help, understand that we need to have hope in Christ or an expectation in Christ. Even when you don't feel hope, just know that we can call on God who came to a hopeless world so that it may have hope. And while we talked about hope, I want to actually also tell you that it's also important for us to put effort behind our prayers and petitions. In fact, the word effort is known or defined as a vigorous or determined attempt, meaning that asking God for help just doesn't stop after we get off of our knees, but in fact, it's our responsibility to do our part as people of God. There's a common phrase that, are, that is used that says, God helps those who help themselves. In other words, that means that when you seek God in prayer, when you seek God for help in your time of trouble, be ready to follow God's direction when, God's directions when he gives them to you. And as people of God, it is so important to make sure that we put the work in after our prayers. It's just not enough to just ask God for help and do nothing afterwards, but it's important for us to be workmen even as God is working out the situation because the Bible tells us to, tells us, tells us when it says, ask and it will be given to you and seek and you will find, knock and it will be opened to you for everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks it will be opened. When seeking help, we have to make sure that we put every effort to ensure that we are doing what God says to do. And I don't want anyone to think or get confused that this means that we have uh, to do works in order to get our prayers answered, because that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that it means that we need to be able to make sure we have to do what we can do and put the effort in. And what answers prayers is, is making an effort to follow instructions after we ask God for help. What answers our prayers is making every effort to be in the presence of God. What answers our prayers is making every effort to be in the face of God, even through our trials and tribulations. What answers prayers is making an effort to follow God despite what we are going through. In your time of need, you still have a mandate, a requirement to make an effort. 
You see, I'm reminded of my experiences as a middle school teacher, that I have a responsibility to make sure that my students are learning and meeting state learning standards. But what I realize now is that learning is a two-way street, and it takes both teacher and student to make learning successful. I can remember an instance where a student did not meet certain standards and they resulted into blaming me as their teacher. And in that moment, I had to uh, make sure that they knew that they should have put the effort in to complete the assignments if they wanted to be successful in the course. Sometimes in life, we can have that type of relationship with God, acting like a middle school student. When we neglect to put in the effort, we can result into saying things like, God didn't do this or God didn't do that. But in all actuality, it was us who didn't put our work in or put the effort in. And that's believers in Christ. In addition to putting effort in all that we do, it is crucial that we take the time we need to take in order to listen. When we talk about the word listen, I can't help but to think about the psalm that says, be still and know that I am God. In other words, that scripture seems to tell us to just stop. For many of us, when we go into prayer, it seems like we are the ones doing all the talking, and when we're finished, we like to close the prayer up without even taking time to listen to the Lord. God just may want us to take time and stop and actually listen. Because in the book of James, it says, be quick to hear and slow to speak. And it's very funny because many of us find ourselves doing a lot of talking and not enough listening in our everyday conversations. And if we have these same tendencies in society, wouldn't it reflect within our time with God? Sometimes asking for help doesn't require a lot to say. Just sometimes it may require a whole lot of listening. Sometimes we just may need to quiet our spirits and allow God to speak to us. And I think this is the most important component of component because when we're in the presence of God, we have to understand that God may be speaking to us and we need to take the time to listen. In fact, listening is so important. It's how we came to understanding our faith because the word says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Friends, understand that listening is crucial. And if we don't take the time and opportunity to first be quiet and listen, then we just may miss what God is trying to do in our time of need. We can ask for help, but in order to understand and see how God is going to work it out, we must listen. Beloved, please understand that listening doesn't mean jumping to your own conclusions within your prayer time. It doesn't mean that, you're gonna, uh, you're, that you make decisions based on what your flesh wants but you're actually taking the time for God to direct your paths, despite how hard it is, despite the circumstances, despite what decisions have to be made. Listening is crucial. Listening is crucial, and it's important. So as you tell God your troubles, understand that it takes us to also listen. Acknowledge him. In other words, listen, and he will direct your paths. And even as we finish up this message, I want to remind you of one last point. While we listen to God, even when we go before the Lord in need of help, we can still utilize the time and opportunity to still give God praise. And I know it may sound odd, but even when you find yourself in a desperate place, even when you find yourself in a dry place, even when you don't feel like praying, God is still worthy of all of the praise. When you pray and ask God for help, just keep a praise on your lips, keep a praise in your mind, keep a praise in your heart, and I guarantee you that if you praise God in your time of need, God will see you through. Despite what circumstances? I can still praise him because he is someone that guides me. I can still praise God because he is a protector. I can still praise God because he's a way maker. I can still praise God because he's a promise keeper. He's a miracle worker. And for that, I can still give God praise. I can still give God praise because he can do the impossible. In my praise, there is help. 
And do you know why we should praise the Lord? Because the word reminds us that it says that he inhabits the praises of his people. Meaning that when we praise God, God begins to occupy our space and begins to become present in our surroundings. And when we praise God, he will begin to shift some things around. And when we praise God, he is turning things around. So I encourage you to know that despite what circumstances you're in, despite what trouble you may face, when you ask God for help, God will show up. When you ask God for help and when you praise God, he will show up and show out. So, remember that when we ask God for help, it's quite all right to praise the Lord. So I want to remind you on these few points. When you ask God for help, make sure that you have hope, the hope of Christ. When you ask God for help, make sure you put an effort behind what you're praying for. When you ask God for help, make sure you're listening to what the Holy Spirit is saying. And when you are asking God for help, make sure that you can still praise God despite your circumstances. And if you were, were, were listening closely, you would have saw the first letter of each word was H-E-L-P. And when you put that all together, that spells help. So, if you got anything out of this message, just know that you can call on Jesus for help. And he'll surely see you through and come to you in your time of need, in your time of trouble. Remember, you can look to the hills from which cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Minister Elijah Brown, for reminding us that God is our help. No matter what we go through, we do not face it alone. Listen, if you're tuned in today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you've been trying to journey through life alone, I invite you to welcome him into your heart. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart, you shall be saved. And if you make the decision today to follow Jesus, complete the digital connection card in the description box and let us know so that we can journey with you. Maybe you already know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you do not have a church home. Family, I would love to be your pastor and the Mark would love to be your church so that you don't have to go at it alone. We know that God is on our side, but it's good to have family walking this path with us. And finally, if you desire prayer, please complete the digital connection card and let us know and our prayer team would be honored to pray with you. And now let us go before the throne of grace. Holy God, we thank you. We thank you, thank you for this day. We thank you for your word, for the reminder that you are are our help, that you are our refuge, that you are the place that we can go when life is difficult. And God, these are difficult days and we need you today. God, we need you to be a healer. God, we need you to be a provider. We need you to be a way maker. We need you to be a deliverer, God. We need you to be a mender of broken hearts. Lord, we need you. Lord, we pray that you would touch every broken heart this morning. God, we pray for those who are anxious and worried. We pray for those who are worried about tomorrow, who are struggling to feed their families, who are wondering how they're going to pay the rent or pay for gas. God, we just pray that you would give us peace while we wait, while we trust that you are on the way, while we trust that you are doing good things in our lives. God, help us to trust in you. Help us not to be anxious, God, but to put our trust in you because we know that you are our help. God, I pray for those who are going through things that I don't even know, but Lord, you know. God, you know every hair on our head. You know every worry in our hearts. You know everything that brings us joy. And so we lift it all up to you right now. God, continue to guide us as a congregation. Help us uh, to be the hands and feet of Christ in the world that we would continue to serve and make an impact. And God, when we find ourselves frustrated or overwhelmed, remind us that, that we can participate in your help, that we can answer prayers, that, that we can make a difference in the world. And so use us now, Lord. Use us to show someone the way, God. We are available to you even as we wait on you. 
God, you know all that we need. And so we just lift it all to you right now. And it's in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. And together we say, amen. Amen. I don't feel no believe he brought me this far to leave me I don't feel no brought me this far to leave me yes god i don't feel no way's hard i've come too far from where i started from nobody told me me this far I don't believe he brought 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 me this far. 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 I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Nobody told me. Nobody told me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't believe. Nobody told me the road would be easy. And I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me nobody told me the road would be easy and I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me yes yes nobody told me the road believe he brought me this far to leave me hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. thank you jesus hallelujah friends it has been a delight to be in worship with you today and now let us receive the benediction May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace today and forever. And together we say, amen. Family, I love you and I'll see you next time. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, 
purchased by God, born of his spirit, washed in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior.